Good afternoon for those on the East Coast time zone like me, and good morning for those on the same time zone as Tully. I'm David Fouts, Vice President of Sales at X-Time, and let me introduce Tully Williams, my uh, co-conspirator here today. Well, thank you, David. Love to meet you, everybody. I'm Tully Williams, Fixed Ops Director for the Nilo Company out in Sacramento. Well, let's dive into it. So every time there is a repair order, you have several interactions with the customer and every one of those interactions is an opportunity for you to win or lose the next appointment. We're going to talk about recommendations around five of these touch points, but specifically focus on some of the digital enhancements that you can do to improve these experiences. And let's start with the very first one, which is the customer is making an appointment for service. Well, when I look at this, I feel like this is the most important touch point, especially in the start of building a relationship and continuing that relationship. As we say, the close sign is off. We are open 24 seven. And do you have your shop truly online? And think about this is that are you managing your capacity of appointments? I believe that if we don't be transparent online and we don't make it easy for the customer to do business, we will not make that business. Think about Amazon's and all these companies that made online business easy. We need to make your store and our store, our dealerships, easy to make an appointment. It should be thumb clicks. It should know who we are. It should know our car. And best of all is that, are we afraid to display our prices online, especially what we've heard before? Absolutely not. Make sure your prices are online. Be transparent with your pricing. Be bold. Show them what it is all about. And then last but least, and as David said previously, pickup and delivery. This has exploded during COVID. And as we've all learned, the pickup and delivery piece is that we've tried to fall into it. We must have great software to help us with this. And if we don't provide that pickup and delivery, we're going to miss out on a tremendous amount of business. When we look at, is it easy to do business when you call up your dealer or make an appointment online and say, I want my car picked up and dropped off. How easy is that? So are we one open for business 24 seven, 365 is our capacity aligned? So we have real time appointments. Are we being transparent and are we offering services that our customers want as pickup and delivery? Setting expectations at the beginning of this engagement is key and being transparent, as Sully said, is, is vital. Consumers tell us that understanding cost estimates, you know, is really important. And um, we really, you know, as an industry, we need to get here. If you're not already um, providing routine maintenance price references is really important. And, and secondly, and, and more interestingly, in these recent months, pickup and delivery is not only preferred for a customer for convenience, but boy, dealerships that have engaged with this are making a lot more money. Um, so 91% of consumers, and, and this is from a study you know, done just last month, who have used SPUD are likely to choose a dealership based on it being offered. And 48% of those who we surveyed who have had a pickup and delivery service agreed that they would pay 20 bucks uh, extra for that uh, convenience going forward. What kind you know, of experiences are you guys having at, at Nilo, Tully? Well, you know, David, when you talk about pickup and delivery and the response has been ginormous, you think about some of the touch points that customers are fearful about dealerships or any outside service is the inconvenience of taking my car into repair. Oh my God, I've got to plan the morning. Then I got to get on a shuttle or get a loaner or rental car. And when you talk about taking that completely out of the picture where the stress of dropping them, picking up the car is completely gone, we are setting our expectations so much higher than independents can ever imagine and try to drive that ultimate repeated referral business. So some of the keys to doing this well include at the moment that your customer's making that service appointment, showing them availability for pickup and delivery and helping them understand and open their lens. Frankly, 
I could make an appointment a lot of times if I know I don't have to actually drive to the dealership and then drive back to pick it up. Um, so setting those expectations and of course, delivering on this service takes many of the interactions that we used to have with a consumer in the service lane and it moves those interactions to the driveway and to the phone that that customer is using to communicate with us. Tully, why don't you, you know, elaborate on some of the things that you see? So I think the check-in or in lane or during pickup has completely changed. And I wanna say, I wanna thank COVID for this where now we are making it easy. As David was talking about pickup and delivery is that when we look at self check-in or just check-in easily, we're talking about check-in at the driveway of the customer's house. We're talking about check-in at the employment area where the person is working, or we're talking about check-in at the dealership driveway. The nice thing about having technology and having the ability to go off-site is one, we can have the pickup and delivery that they're requesting. Remember, that was 98%. Two, we also can have the ability to walk around the car with a tablet, take pictures, and then offer recommendations as in tires and previous declined activities. Having that same atmosphere, the same way we've done it at the dealership, now in front of the customer wherever they like is a humongous deal. This is where software comes into play that makes us do the best we can do. And of course, as we see forward is when we're doing that check and getting that line of communication the customer wants. And as we know that texting is clearly the most superior is that we can then opt in for checking, check for opt in for texting the way the customer wants to be communicated with. To me, the check-in is the biggest piece that has changed during this whole event. So this is really, I would say, an area that has is about the same, but then we went on steroids. As I say, that is, we've always done inspections on cars. We've always done a digital inspection with a form. But now what we are going to do is that with that digital inspection is we're going to tie video and pictures. So when a customer is unsure or uneasy or not, what, what does that mean? Is that we're going to have live, we'll have video that is sent to the customer, or we'll actually have pictures of that problem with their car. The brakes are low. The rotors are damaged. The oil leak is leaking. The coolant is leaking. And then think of it this way too, is we always kind of forget, you know, warranty is free. Remember, warranty is customer pay. The factory just pays the bill. Is that when someone says, hey, we're going to take care of that under warranty, the majigabet is broken. We can actually take a picture and actually show the customer what's happening. So I think this inspection has changed for the better and is making our customers more sure of saying yes. Absolutely. We should assume, you should assume that your customer does not trust you because repeatedly consumers tell us that they mistrust the dealership service department. It's undeserved, but it is their perception. And so if you think about it in that context, you came to my house, you took my car, who knows where, now you're telling me I need to spend you a bunch of a, a bunch of money for some problem that I wasn't aware of, and then you're going to bring it back to me, and it's going to work kind of like it did before you took it, right? That you you have to pr uh, in, engage with them. I think with this perspective, just assume they don't trust you. And multimedia helps dealerships cut through all of that misperception immediately. I can see my car on your lift and I can see the broken part and I can see my technician, even though you came and picked up my car and I believe that person that's talking to me, it is very powerful tool. We're seeing that um, ASRs, additional service recommendations that were approved at one of our customers, you know, between March and July, the incremental dollars from them implementing video was 1.5 million. And we see across the board, 43% of additional service recommendations when it includes pictures, videos, are approved within the first 15 minutes. Almost 50% of them are approved, period. And that compares to a 30% approval rate without 
videos and photos. Um, this is powerful. It reminds me of a movie with Tom Cruise and Cameron Diaz, Night and Day, when he's saying, with me, without me. What? It is vital. Take a picture, take a video, and show your customer that they have every reason to trust your recommendation. And then, of course, we do the great work and we have the opportunity to deliver the vehicle, the fixed vehicle, back to the customer, whether that's at the dealership or in their driveway or in the parking lot of their office. Tully, what are the keys here? You know, when you look at this thing here, to me, this is, the, this is what keeps retention growing. One is that we're going to take the time to sell those values and services, but here we go. We're going to go over the repair. We're going to go over any declines that the customer decide not to do today. And then we're going to give those delivery. Are we going to take the car back? Are we going to go over the next recommendations? Are we going to go over what's coming up next? But here's the biggest thing is, are we making the next appointment? Is that if we ask the customer, so I see you're in here for your service. I have scheduled your next appointment for blank months or miles based on previous. You know, this is the most important to keep that retention. And then, of course, the best part of it is how we have to say it now is the virtual hugs and kisses to make sure we get that great CSI. And in turn, what CSI really means is customer supplies income and drives repeat and referral business. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> customer supplies income. Uh, yeah, it is all about them at, at the end of the day. So let's make sure they know what we did for them and that we appreciate their business. And we can reinforce that message in between service visits. And that's our fifth opportunity to interact on every um, service repair order. So we have recommendations around sending tailored one-to-one -one marketing messages with the context of their vehicle and the service needs of their vehicle. And when you do that, and when you link that message to directly into a, a appointment tool where when they hit the link, your system knows who they are and knows what their car is and doesn't ask them to retell you who they are, those kinds of details really drive retention. Um, whether it's messaging about declined services, whether it's uh, reminding them about a coming maintenance interval, whether it's giving them a heads up on a key recall. Um, and, and in general, we would recommend that you assess in your own dealership, just ask yourself this question, when a customer says yes, whether it's with your BDC on the phone, whether it's replying to an email or a text, what happens? How, how hard or easy is it in your process to turn a yes into action that's bringing them back to the dealership? Coupons and specials can and and can be effective and still happen, but really it's a last resort. It there are really many better ways before sending out a general 15% off if you come in kind of message to your customers. Tully? You know, when I look at this here, this is where I really believe that standout vendors do the best for us. You know, when you look at a lot of times of OEM manufacturers and their products to help us with this, it's one of those mass email blasts and it sends you back to the dealership's website. And I think that when you're looking at in between visits, the most important thing is how hard is it to make the next appointment for a decline? Or how hard is it to make a recall appointment? And I think what, what we can talk about is when you have that embedded link when you have it where, oh, I see I need to get that water pump done that I previously declined. I click on that button and what does it do? It opens up the scheduler, oh my God, with the recommendation, with the next available time slot. This is a concept of what, oh my God, versus the good old days where people that don't have this technology is that all it does is pushes you back to the website which again is marketing new and used vehicles. So I think when you look at these sites here is how do we push people back to where you want them to go and how easy it is to make that next appointment. You need a system that will allow you to set up rules and automation because the enemy is no customer follow-up. 
the enemy is also, as Tully was saying, generic customer follow-up. One-to-one messaging with links to their vehicle, their declined services, um, that's informative but not pushy, right. and that makes it convenient to take next steps. These are the types of communications that work and work great. Again, we see, and it's measurable, that you know about half of ASRs are initially declined. It'd be less than that if more dealers used video, but about 58% are in fact today declined. For the average dealership, that's about $200,000 of work per month that was on your lift at one point, but left your dealership. So it's a significant opportunity. And frankly, you win credibility, you make your customer happier when you follow up in the right ways about their specific you know, vehicle safety and, and maintenance needs.